Welcome to Screen Recaps, and today we are going to be recapping the movie Nowhere. In the near future, a dire crisis grips Europe, with people struggling to access basic necessities. Totalitarian regime, not enough at all, seizes power to tackle resource scarcity by taking extreme measures. Initially, they target the elderly, followed by pregnant women and children. Some countries, including Ireland, Iceland, and Norway, resist the regime and become havens for refugees. Among them are Nico and his pregnant wife, Mia. One night, a smuggler guides them to the local harbor, and they navigate through containers, encountering a dog in their path. They change course to avoid helicopter searchlights and manage to evade the authorities, capturing other escapees. As they continue their journey, they encounter another smuggler who demands more money. Strapped for options, they reluctantly surrender their wedding rings. Inside a truck filled with women and children, they share a tense journey. Mia, worried about her unborn child, is reassured by Nico, who shows her where the baby's foot usually kicks. He surprises her with a Snickers bar, a small token of celebration they've been saving for their arrival in Ireland. When a resourceful refugee drills a hole in the truck, Mia observes the other children and grapples with guilt for leaving their first child behind. Nico reminds her that soldiers had taken their first child away, presumably resulting in her demise. After a few hours of travel, the truck makes a stop to pick up more refugees, leading to overcrowding. The smuggler decides to split the group, leaving the women and children behind while the men depart in another vehicle. Nico attempts to explain they were already in the same truck with his wife, but his pleas go unanswered and he's separated. Mia watches through a hole as the doors close and her husband is taken away. They reassure each other through phone communication, believing their paths will converge later. For now, she must conserve her phone battery and keep an eye on their belongings. As the truck continues its journey, Mia peers through the hole, distressed by the violence prevailing in every corner. Soldiers mercilessly quell riots and women are hauled away in cages, resembling livestock. Sometime later, the truck halts at a checkpoint, prompting all the women to scramble to the back, seeking cover. The driver presents papers indicating the transport of cargo, but the soldiers, despite this, inspect the truck. Initially, they only spot a few boxes as the refugees remain concealed behind a false wall. However, the leader harbors suspicions and dispatches one of his men inside, instructing him to venture as far as possible and fire at the side wall. The man complies, and by discerning the differing distance, the leader discerns the presence of a hidden compartment. He and his soldiers enter, urging the women to emerge. Fearing the worst, Mia clambers atop the crates just before one of the women opens the concealed wall. The leader swiftly dispatches her, and the other soldiers open fire, resulting in the massacre of the entire group while Mia is drenched in their blood. In the end, the sole survivors are the dog and a young child. The dog manages to escape, but the soldiers ensure the child's demise as well. After their departure, Mia weeps and sends her husband a message, urging him to remain hidden. A few hours later, the truck arrives at another harbor, and the container is transferred to be loaded onto a ship. Mia attempts to contact Nico, but he doesn't answer, so she leaves another message informing him that the ship is transporting her away. She then checks the contents of her bag and illuminates the area with a light before drifting off to sleep. Sometime later, Mia awakens as the container begins to shake. Through the bullet-riddled holes, she observes the sailors scurrying around due to a fierce storm wreaking havoc on the ship. Mia cries out for help as the jolting causes her to tumble and sustain injuries until a sudden impact renders her unconscious. Moments later, Mia regains consciousness and realizes that water is seeping into the container through the holes. When she gazes outside, she discerns that the ship has sunk, and all the containers, including hers, are adrift in the middle of the sea. She begins to panic and attempts to call Nico, but her phone is shattered and unresponsive. Next, she tries an additional phone from her bag, but she can't recall the password to unlock it. After ensuring the baby's well-being, Mia observes that water continues to infiltrate the container, prompting her to start opening the crates in search of useful items. Regrettably, she only finds items like plastic containers, televisions, alcoholic beverages, and earbuds. Among them, she locates several hoodies and dons one of them. After surveying the contents, she collects her belongings that spilled from her bag, including some tape and a Swiss army knife. Employing the tape to temporarily seal the holes and slow the water's ingress, Mia discovers her diary and finds solace in a picture of her family. 
Suddenly she hears screams and peers through the hole to witness a container gradually sinking with people inside. A distraught Mia screams Nico's name and inserts her SIM card into the functional phone, but Nico doesn't answer as the container sinks, leaving Mia in distress. Throughout the next few hours, she repeatedly tries to reach Nico on the phone without success. By nightfall, she contemplates using the knife for drastic measures but is startled when she feels the baby moving. Mia resolves to persevere for the sake of the baby and goes to sleep while listening to the whales singing outside. Later she notices a hanging crate trembling and moves aside just before it drops, inadvertently causing water to rush into the container. She briefly believes she's about to drown but wakes up, realizing it was a nightmare. She finds the tape has come loose and the water situation worsens. She places a crate under the hanging one and releases it with her knife, only to discover more plastic containers. Initially frustrated, she gets an idea. She extracts rubber from the container lids and uses it to seal the lower holes. Mia also repurposes a machine from one of the crates to siphon off the water. She arranges two crates against the wall for a makeshift bed and marks the water levels with tape, counting down the days until it reaches a critical point. After another futile attempt with the phone, Mia dismantles earbud wires and hangs her diary photographs to dry. Then she examines her provisions, ensuring she rations her water bottles and food appropriately. She also discovers that the drill and lighter, left behind by others, are still functional. Out of the blue, her phone receives a call from an unfamiliar number, and Mia answers to discover it's Nico. He couldn't respond earlier due to a drained battery, and he's alive because the other driver deceived them. Rather than taking them to the harbor, he left the group on the outskirts of the city. Mia recounts her ordeal, and Nico vows to rescue her, emphasizing the need to conserve battery and survive for their child. Suddenly, Mia experiences a contraction and pleads with the baby to wait a little longer. She takes a bite of her sandwich and repositions the crates, though boredom eventually sets in. She observes an approaching storm and feels another contraction, hoping it's a false alarm. However, she soon realizes her assessment was incorrect. The storm arrives, rocking the container, and the baby is indeed on the way. Mia screams in pain as water enters the container once more and her phone rings, but it slips from her hand when she attempts to answer. With no alternative, Mia removes her dress and clings to the crate's rope, standing up as she delivers the baby in the water. The umbilical cord is entwined around the baby's neck, but Mia swiftly removes it and soothes the baby until she cries. Mia then ascends to the top of a crate, cradling the child and awaiting the passing of the storm. The following morning, she senses the placenta detaching from her body and stores it in a plastic container. Subsequently, she tidies up as best as she can and places the baby in a small box with a hoodie while checking her belongings. She consumes a portion of canned food, but the phone sustains water damage and is inoperable. To exacerbate matters, the baby's cries persist and Mia attempts to breastfeed her unsuccessfully. Upon hearing the container's metal creaking, Mia devises a plan. She employs the drill to create holes in the ceiling, aiming to cut an opening for her escape. However, the noise intensifies the baby's crying. She tries to soothe her, but even singing proves ineffective, leading Mia to lose her temper and shout at the infant. At least when she comprehends her actions, she promptly offers an apology. Moments later, Mia senses her chest responding and attempts to feed the baby once more. This time, milk flows, and the child finally feeds. When exhaustion overtakes her, Mia succumbs to the temptation of finishing all the food she has. Then she returns to drilling the ceiling, but regrettably, the drill's battery depletes before she can complete the task. Subsequently, she reinserts the SIM card into the original phone, but it remains unresponsive. Frustration eventually overwhelms her, prompting her to vent her frustration by throwing her possessions in anger. Upon discovering the knife, she endeavors to utilize it on the ceiling holes, only to find it painful for her hands. As time passes, Mia has no other recourse but to care for the baby, occasionally dampening the child's skin to provide relief from the heat. Sleeping proves difficult, as her empty stomach constantly grumbles. Ultimately, desperation prevails, and Mia decides to consume her own placenta. Suddenly, she hears the wails outside once more, and when she peers out, the container is struck by a whale, causing the baby to cry once again. Mia responds by thumping the container walls, startling the whale away. The following morning, Mia tries once more to use the knife on the holes, only to have it break. The phone remains unresponsive, and Mia consumes the last of the clean water. Overcome by dizziness due to the heat, 
Mia gathers some seawater and pours it over her head. She resorts to licking water droplets from the ceiling, but this makes her ill after a few minutes. The dizziness worsens with time, and Mia suddenly envisions a paper plane landing on her legs. In that moment, her first daughter materializes, blaming her mother for her death at the hands of the soldiers. Mia weeps as Nico also appears beside her, reminding her that it wasn't her fault. When Mia awakens from this dream, she feels better because it's finally raining, and water trickles through the holes. Mia ensures she drinks some water and collects as much as she can in the plastic containers. She also seizes the can, but when the lid breaks, she gets an idea. The rope from the crates is threaded through the holes in the ceiling, and Mia starts pulling down until she finally succeeds in creating an opening that allows sunlight to filter in. Afterward, Mia ascends to the top of the container and confirms that there's no land in sight. She and the baby spend their time there to get some fresh air, and when it's time to change the baby, Mia discards the soiled hoodie into the water. This attracts the attention of a group of fish, prompting Mia to hastily acquire some rope and a piece of metal to attempt fishing. Despite her efforts, she struggles to catch a single fish. Frustrated, she suddenly spots a passing plane and rushes back into the container to break a television, procuring a piece of its screen. She climbs back out, but in her haste she inadvertently injures her leg. Temporarily disregarding the pain, she employs the screen piece to reflect sunlight, but the plane fails to notice her and flies away. Disheartened, Mia returns inside the container and employs wires and small metal pieces to stitch her wound. It's an excruciating process, so she attempts to alleviate the pain with alcohol. Subsequently, she observes the numerous earbuds and devises another plan. Using the wires, she begins crafting a net. Once completed, she tosses it into the sea with a soiled cloth and manages to ensnare some fish, which she consumes raw. Over the ensuing days, Mia diligently works on her survival. She continues to remove water from the container using a hose and successfully catches fish with the net, storing them in the plastic containers. She also extracts paper sheets from her diary to write multiple SOS notes, placing them in containers with the hope that someone will come across them. One afternoon, Mia shows the baby all the family pictures and decides to name the child Noah after her grandmother, in accordance with Nico's preference. She also shares the story of her sister and the soldier's involvement, still grappling with the sense of guilt. Later in the evening, Mia realizes that Noah is getting cold and uses some alcohol and a lighter to start a fire. In the middle of the night, she hears something striking the wall and investigates, discovering it's just a plastic container. At that moment, her phone begins to ring, and she's overjoyed to hear Nico's voice. Regrettably, he brings grim tidings. He attempted to steal a boat, but was spotted by soldiers and shot. Right now he's hiding, but he's slowly bleeding out, and he doesn't have much time left. Nico's called to say goodbye, and make Mia promise she'll survive. So Mia puts the phone next to Noah so he can talk to her, and hear her cute little noises. After Mia and Nico tell each other I love you, her battery dies, and the wind puts out the fire as she cries. It's then revealed that Mia still has the Snickers bar, which she's saving for the end of her journey, as promised. On day 26, Mia is about to lose it. There are drawings and rants on paper sheets taped all over the container walls, which is about to reach the water limits. So Mia and the baby are now living on top of it. Mia also is using the crate wood, the plastic containers, and the rope to put together a raft. Suddenly, a seagull lands on the container to take some of her fish, and this gives Mia hope because it means they must be near land. Later in the evening, Mia manages to start a new fire and gets a sail ready for her raft. Suddenly she hears a noise inside the container and realizing it'll sink soon. Mia dives in to gather all her pictures. She also sees the Snickers bar inside a plastic container, so she takes the risk and goes further inside to grab it. As the water pushes the raft with Noah away, Mia's foot gets tangled with some rope, so she struggles against it while trying not to drown. With a piece of metal, she manages to cut off the rope and quickly swims out of the container right before it finally sinks. When Mia reaches the surface, she's terrified to discover she can't see Noah. At that moment, a wall passes by and expels some water which hits Noah and makes her cry. Now Mia can follow the direction of the noise and reunite with her daughter. The next morning, while they float around, Mia opens a plastic container and throws out some fish, hoping to attract some birds. Soon, a bunch of seagulls are flying above them, and this is noticed by a boat that is sailing nearby. 
they immediately take the boat in that direction and to rescue the small raft, finding Noah inside alive and well. There's also a rope coming out of the raft and falling into the sea, so the sailors start pulling until Mia's body comes out. The sailors immediately start applying CPR, but Mia won't wake up. However, they refuse to give up for the sake of the baby. After lots of chest compressions, Mia finally reacts, and the sailors hand the baby to her before using the radio to call for help. It takes Mia a moment to realize she's safe, and when she looks at the horizon, she sees they're approaching Ireland, meaning she'll be able to get the new life she wanted. I thought I was dead.